Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be Introduction to Matrix Multiplication. In this video, we will learn two methods for multiplying a matrix by a vector. After that, we're going to do some practice problems. So we're going to learn two methods for multiplying a matrix times a vector. And the first method is called the row vector rule. If I have some matrix A and I want to multiply it by a vector X, I can do the following. And here I'm just going to start with a 2 by 2 matrix. So I've written out both my matrix and the vector and components. And to do the row vector rule, I just simply take the row, first row of the matrix times the vector. And so I'm going to multiply their components, the first component of that row times the first component of the vector. So I have A11 times X1 plus the second element of the row, A12, times the second element of the vector, X2. And do the same thing with the second row of the matrix. Take the first component of the row, A21, times the first component of the vector, X1. The last term would be A22, X2. And so I have this vector as the result. So that's the result. This would be my final solution. It would just be a vector. But I can also do a little bit of algebra on this result to see something that's interesting. Now I have the sum in each of the components. So I could easily write this as the sum of two vectors, a11x1, a21x1, plus the vector a12x2 and a22x2. So I could simply write this as the sum of two vectors. Now in that first vector, both components have a factor of x1. I could factor that x1 factor out of this vector and rewrite this as x1 times the vector a11 and a21. I can do the same thing in the second vector. I can factor out the x2 to get this result. But now I can see that this multiplication of the matrix times the vector, the result looks just like some number x1 times the first column of A plus some number times the second column of A. And so really what this looks like is just a linear combination of the columns of A. And that's actually our second technique for multiplying a matrix times a vector. Our second rule is the linear combination of the columns of A. So in this thought process for multiplying a matrix times a vector, I just take a linear combination of the columns where the components of my vector are the weights of that linear combination. So it's the first component of the vector, x1, times the first column of the matrix, plus the second component of the vector times the second column of the matrix. And I have this result. That's the definition of matrix multiplication using the linear combination approach. Now let's look at some examples. Here I have a matrix times a vector. I'm going to actually do this both different ways. I'll start off by using the row vector rule. I will take 1 times 3, 1 times 3, plus 2 times 1, 2 times 1. I'll do the same thing for the second row. I'll have 1 times 3 plus, plus 1 times 1. And finally, the last row is going to be 3 times 3 plus 1 times 1. And this is the vector I will get as a result. And when I simplify this a little bit, I will get 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 plus 1 is 4, and 9 plus 1 is 10. So my result of multiplying this matrix and this vector is the vector 5, 4, 10. But of course, I should be able to do this using the linear combination approach and still get to the same result. Thinking about in terms of linear combination, I would take that first component of the vector, that's 3, times the first row, plus the second component, 1, times the second row. The result will be, if I multiply 3 times that first vector, I get 3, 3, 9, plus 2, 1, 1, and the result is going to be 5, 4, 
10. So of course I should have that same result, regardless of how I think about the multiplication. Now let's take a look at the second example. Well, the second example, if I start to do the row vector rule, if I start to take the first component of the row and the first component of the vector, I would get 1 times 1 plus the second component of the row times the second component of the vector plus the third component of the row, but I don't have a third component of the vector. So it doesn't look like I can use this definition. If I was thinking about this in terms of a linear combination, I would encounter the same problem. I would get 1 times the first column plus 2 times the second column, but I wouldn't have a value times by the third column. So in this case, I can't do the multiplication. And the reason I can is because the dimensions of the matrix don't match up with the dimensions of the vector. So let's go back and look at our last example. The first matrix we had was a 3 by 2 matrix. And we were multiplying that by a vector. This vector was a, a 2 by 1 matrix. And what we see here is that the number of columns in the matrix must match up with the number of rows in the vector. That's these two inside numbers. So those two inside numbers must match for me to be able to multiply this matrix by this vector. Those numbers must match. But then if we look at a result, our result when we were all done was this vector, and that vector is a 3 by 1 vector. And sure enough, I can see that in the dimensions of the original matrix and vector. My outside values are 3 by 1. And those values give us the dimension of the final product. And so to summarize these ideas, if A is an M by N matrix, then the product AB is only defined when B is an N by 1 vector. So I have A that's an M by N multiply that by some other value b, b has to be an n by 1, and the result, the value I get as a final product, will also be a m by 1 vector. So the inside values need to match for me to do the multiplication, and the outside values tell me the size of the resulting vector. And that concludes this video on matrix multiplication.